So now I'm going to do a couple of homework exercises from 3.1. Um, the more challenging ones because I think sometimes you get hung up on, on, a, on a question and then you don't know how to do it and then you start crying. But you don't because you're going to come here and I'm going to tell you how or you're going to ask me to do it for you, right? So this is 3.1, page 146, number 7. It says, examine the parabola at left and it looks like this. State the direction of opening. Well, I think you've got that figured out by now, right? Concave down, why the frown? You can make a un very unhappy face. So this is concave down. State the coordinates of the vertex. Well, find them. Here's the vertex here, right? This is vertex. Vertex is the highest or the lowest point on a parabola. So this is minus one and eight. So the vertex is minus one and eight. List the values of the x-intercepts, okay? So x-intercept, where does it cross the x-axis? Where does it intercept with the graph? So here, this is minus 1, 0, this is 1, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. So the x-intercepts are 1 and minus 3. Don't write them in brackets, like 1, comma, minus 3. No, 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 no. That would be the coordinate 1 and 3. You don't want that. The x-intercepts are 1 and minus 3. The domain and range. Okay, so the domain. Domain. Remember, that's what values can I put in for x. So it's going to be x is an element of real numbers. This is not a word problem. It's a parabola. So you can plug in any value. See how there's arrows on the end of this graph? It means the x-coordinates continue. I can use any value for x and get some answer for y, even if it was minus 3 and minus 200. It's still there. That's the domain. And the range, r. Now remember, when you're doing the range, the range is where does the function go? What is the highest point? And it goes down from there. So it's going to be y. y is less than or equal to 8. And y is an element of real numbers. Less than or equal to 8. That's the highest point, And it goes down from there. Sorry about the phone call. That's the range. And if you calculated the second differences, what would their sign be? Well, because it's concave down, that means the second differences will be negative. Second differences are negative. And determine an algebraic model. Okay, so this is where it gets tough, right? You knew all this stuff. This is easy. But what is the equation of this function? So what I want to do with you is... I want to do the different formats. We can do a factored form, a vertex form, and a standard form. So you get to choose which one. It didn't ask you for a specific form, but I'm going to start with the factored form. Let's do that in purple here. So you've got factored form. Factored form. And remember from the equation, it means f at x equals a x minus s times x minus t. Now, when you're doing a factored form, you do need to know where the zeros are. And I do. I know the x-intercepts are the zeros, same thing, are 1 and minus 3. So that's these values here, s and t. So I highly recommend that you state what each of these variables is represented by for this function. So I'm going to say s is minus 3 and t is equal to 1. I didn't go through there very nice. Let's make a bigger dot. Okay, so s is minus 3, t is positive 1, and I need an x and I need a y. And if I have x, s, t, and y, or f at x in this case, I can solve for a very easily. So the best point to use, you could use minus 1 and 8, but this one right here it was marked on the graph, and this point is 0 and 6. Really nice point to use because when you have a 0, it's always easy to work with zeros. So I'm going to use those points. Now all I have to do is plug those into the equation and solve for a. 
So I write 6 is equal to a times 0 minus minus 3. Be really careful with your minus minuses. And t is 1. So that means 6 is equal to a times 3 times 1. Or 6 is equal to 3 a's. And to get 1a, I divide both sides by 3, and a is equal to 2. So that means the factored form would be f at x equals 2 times x plus 3 times x minus 1. So you plug everything back in. You always have x's and f at x's because that's what's going to give you a series of points on your function, right? If you don't have these in your equation, then... You're not going anywhere. So there's the factored form. Now let's look at the um, the standard form. Just a minute here. Did I had what it says t minus three and two minus minus three? Yeah, there's zero minus one. There should have been a minus one, right? Zero take one is minus one. So that gives me minus three a minus two and minus two. So it better be because it was concave down. So that would be another little flag for you if you were doing this. You got to the end and went, oh, how come this one's up and this one's down? Find your mistake. Okay, let's go to the vertex form. And remember the vertex form. Vertex form, that was the one that we used a lot of in grade 10 because it gave the transformations. Y equals AX minus H squared plus k. Okay, so what's h and k? Again, get your information off onto the side here, like I did for the factored form. I'm going to do the same thing here. So I have h is equal to minus 1. That's the vertex here. Minus 1. I wrote it here. And k is equal to 8. I'm going to use the same x and y. Now, if you had already finished this here, you know that this a is going to be the same as this a, which would be the same a in the standard form. The a doesn't change. It's telling you the shape or the vertical stretch or compression or reflection of the parabola. So once you had minus 2 here, you could have gone directly to the vertex form by just plugging in the vertex here. But let's do it the long way. Say we hadn't done this factored form. And I would say, okay, that means that 6 is going to be equal to a times 0 minus minus 1 squared plus 8. And 0 minus minus 1, that's 1 squared is 1. So I have 6 is equal to a plus 8. And a is equal to minus 2. So the vertex form then would be y is equal to minus 2x plus 1 squared plus 8. Same thing here. This one gave you the zeros. This one gave you the vertex. So finally, if I wanted to get the standard form now, remember the standard form is just an expansion of one of these two. So standard form, I want it in. Well, I said y and f and x. So it doesn't really matter, but because you're in grade 11 and you're doing a lot of function notation, let's do the expansion of this to get the standard form. So f at x is equal to, now I'm going to do minus 2. I'll write it out first, plus 8. Now I'm going to square this binomial. So that's minus 2 square twice the product squared plus 8. That's minus 2x squared minus, oops, almost made a mistake, minus 4x minus 2 plus 8. So that's minus 2x squared minus 4x plus 6. Now that makes sense because my y-intercept was 6. If you look back over at the graph here, y-intercept was 6. I have the same a value for all three formats. And that's how you find the different formats of a quadratic. So quickly getting to the last question, I wanted to do number 11 from your homework assignment. 
I teach it probably assigned this one. This is 11 on the next page, 147. And it ha it's a word problem. And it gives you the height of a rocket above the ground. And it gives you this equation, minus 4t squared plus 32t. Where h of t is meters, that's the height at the time t. So the height at any time t is in meters and the time is in seconds. Time in seconds. And the first question says graph the quadratic function. So in order to graph a quadratic, the easiest way to do is to factor it. Or you could do a long table of values. That would take you a long, long time though. Because watch this, we factor it. We take out a minus 4t, that gives us t minus 8. And what can I tell from the factored form? The zeros. So the zeros for this function are 0 and 8. So I'll make a quick sketch here. And I'll go by 2s. 2, 4, 6, 8. This is time. This is the height at time t. And here's my zeros. So I had two zeros, zero, zero, and eight. So this is a story of a rocket. The rocket went up in the air, the rocket came down, it hit the ground. Where's the axis of symmetry? Well, it's going to be, I'm sorry, have it below the graph here. Um, the axis of symmetry is going to be halfway between zero and eight. So zero plus eight is eight divided by two is four. Here's my axis of symmetry. So the axis of symmetry is where the parabola is going to reach its highest point. So my rocket went up in the air. This pen's dying. Went up in the air and it came back down like that. End of story. So the domain for this function is 0 to 8. That's it. That's all. Let's write the domain out. It wasn't part of your homework assignment, but you should know the domain is t's and t is between 0 and 8. t is an element of real numbers, meaning that this rocket didn't skip any time between 0 and 8 seconds. I mean, realistically, that would make not make any sense. Okay, so we've graphed it. How long will it be in the air? It'll be in the air for 8 seconds. How do you know? That's when it hit the ground. How high will the rocket be after three seconds? Well, that's h at three. This is uh, part C here. h at three. So where I see a three in my equation, I'm uh, sorry, a t, I plug in three. Plug it in carefully. Make sure that you put it in brackets, especially if you're asked for a value that's negative, which wouldn't happen in a word problem like this. So I have nine times minus four is minus 36. And 32 times 3 is 96. And that would give me 60. So at 3 seconds here, this would have to be 60. Um, the last question says, what is the maximum height of the rocket? So the maximum height occurs, maximum height when you are on the, I hope you're finishing this for me, on the axis of symmetry. Okay, so the axis of symmetry happens what, at four seconds. So I want to know what is h at four? So I have minus four times four squared plus 32 times four this time. And 4 squared is 16 times minus 4 is negative 64. And 32 times 4, if you're really good, you should be able to do this in your head. It's not that hard. And this, of course, is double that one. So if I subtract, I get 64. So that means that this highest point right here on my graph, this is going to be 4 and 64. So if I had asked you now to write this in vertex form, you should be able to tell me because you know the a value. So in vertex form, you would say, oh, the height at any time t will be minus 4 times. I have the vertex, so I have t minus 4 squared plus 64.
and there's your vertex form and there is your standard form, your factored form, all in the same question. So hope that helped. Um, send me a little note or post a comment here so I know that I'm helping you out. Give me a thumbs up at least and subscribe so that you'll be getting all of the um, lessons as I post them. Thank you. Bye-bye.